Hey guys, welcome to another weekly weapons brief brought to you by Battlefield Vegas. Today, we're going to be talking about the Breda 37. The Breda 37 is a medium machine gun. It's gas-operated, air-cooled, fires from the open tilting bolt. It fires about 450 rounds per minute of the 8 by 59 millimeter round from a 20 round feed strip and it uses a thumb trigger between dual spade grips. Alright, so the Breda 37 was in production from 1937 until 1943, but it was in service until into the 60s because Portugal actually rechambered it. It does have a quick change barrel on it with a 10 position manual gas system that if adjusted properly allows the gun to shoot at a 450 rounds per minute. Adjusting the rate of fire to about 200 rounds per minute was actually more practical due to uh, anything firing up to the 400s uh, caused a lot of malfunctions. This gun's susceptible to a lot of jams if there's any kind of dirt introduced to it and a lot of that has to do with the way that the gun loads and extracts which is why every single cartridge gets oiled before firing. Here though, we don't, really, we don't really have a lot of problems with it being in the indoor range like we would be if we were out in the field. The Breda 37 was originally supposed to be a coaxial gun for tanks, so it has some features that make it a very difficult infantryman's gun. For example, the weight of this thing alone. It's combined with the tripod, the two of these together weigh over 80 pounds. Also, trying to reload the, the feeding strips, the 20 round feeding strips, almost requires a hand crank to pull out a, an empty cartridge and replace it with a live one. Now that we've gone over some of that, let's send it over to Sean. Sean's going to break it down for you. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, take apart the Breda medium machine gun. Uh, for simplicity purposes for the film, uh, we went ahead and already removed the grip off the back. Uh, it's kind of difficult to do when you don't have it on the tripod, um, but we'll show you that over here on the screen. First thing you want to do is you want to push in on this extremely large recoil spring. It's captured by the grip in the back. You just push in on it and lift out on the back. But because this gun is so front heavy, because of the massive barrel that's on it, uh, when it's not on the tripod, it likes to tip forward and it's a little loud. Once you do that, you just pull back on the charging handle and out comes the bolt carrier assembly. Now, this gun has a little bit uh, different design in it than what you would normally see in the genre and time frame of machine guns. Uh, there's no camming action in this bolt, so when it goes to extract, uh, there's, there's a lot of jams that occur in this gun. Um, because I wasn't alive back then, I don't really know what everyone's opinion on it was, but what, from what I've gathered and what I've seen across other machine guns of similar time frame, this probably didn't make machine gun crews very happy. Uh, start off, uh, the bolt, is pretty much one big block. Uh, on the front of it, it's a tilting bolt design, so you're just gonna pull back on the bolt assembly and lift it out. The extractor itself is actually free floating as well. Uh, you're just gonna pull the extractor off and set that to the side. And this right here is everything as far as cleaning goes. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna punch the bore, things like that, but for the most part, it's very, it's, it's, it's just right there for you. Um, there's not a whole lot of areas to hide carbon and gunk. Um, it's all right there. But with that comes a caveat. Because it's so tight in there, everything is, there's not a whole lot of room. One speck of dust in this gun could potentially jam it. Uh, and that's, that's some of the problems. We don't necessarily run into those here on the range because we're in a controlled environment, we're indoors. We don't really run into the problems that you're gonna run into in the field. But as far as that goes, I mean, that's, this, that's probably the one downfall of this gun. For us, though, the one problem that we see, and I'm sure that machine gun crews in the rush of combat ran into as well, is this clip. It's a 20-round clip that holds it. Uh, what it does is, is it, you, you put the rounds in the clip, and then it pulls them out of the clip, puts them in the chamber, fires them, extracts them from the chamber, and puts them back into the clip. Uh, while that's a very unique design, and I think it's pretty cool that it does it, practically it's, it's pretty much worthless. Uh, it's a low round count, so that meant that machine gun crews had to manually pull all these rounds out, put them all back in, and then refeed the clip into the gun. 
Um, I'm sure that they had multiples of these clips laying around, but I'm sure that it also wasn't very fun to do. Uh, the one thing that we run into here that will jam this gun up in a heartbeat is not centering this clip across the tray properly. And I'll show you that in a sec. Here on the bolt, on the bolt carrier, this is what strips the round out of the clip. On the back here, in between each one of these rounds, there's a spacing bar. If that spacing bar is lined up with this stripper, obviously it's not going to strip around, it's just going to slam into this clip and it's going to bend the clip and then that clip is pretty much worthless after that. On the bottom of these clips, they're really only held in by bent sheet metal uh, and it doesn't take much force to, to remove it. And over here, I actually have some where you can see where they're bent from being damaged uh, and then they're pretty much worthless. To put this gun back together, it's exactly the opposite of what we just did. You're just going to put the extractor back on the bolt, slide the bolt down onto the carrier, insert the carrier into the rear of the gun, sliding it all the way home, put the recoil spring back in, capture it by the back plate, and that's it. It's a, it's a very basic gun. Uh, it's from, in my opinion, it took more steps to get this gun into service than even some of your bolt action rifles of the time frame. Uh, I, I don't feel like this was a very practical gun. I'm not sure what they were thinking as far as designing it and thinking that it was going to be practical. But I'm rambling now and we're going to go shoot it on the range.